Um, uh, today we're going to go over what to look for when you're inspecting a cistern, or what we look for when we're inspecting a, a cistern that's being used to supply someone's uh, house for the primary water supply. This particular cistern is a rain-fed cistern, but it's it's the same sort of uh, process if you have a spring-fed cistern or a haul water tank. Um, the first thing, we're getting ready to clean out the cistern, and the first thing that we're looking for when we approach the tank is we're looking at this riser. And this, this particular riser, uh, you can see, is, is even or just below grade level. Um, and that's not what we want. We want to make sure that this riser is at least eight inches above grade. And especially on a downhill slope like this, you don't want this riser to be anywhere close to grade level um, because any sort of groundwater pooling is going to just run right in. It could run right into this system. So we want to uh, we want to make sure that this riser is at least eight inches above grade to prevent any groundwater contamination in the system. If you look down in the cistern, we, you see our pumps that are, that are evacuating the water so that we can clean it, but you'll also see this white filter in the tank. That is a, a floating intake filter, which is great. That's, that's what we want. If you have a jet pump inside the house, you want to have some sort of floating intake so that, that, that the intake for the pump is suspended just above the surface, or just below the surface where the water is the cleanest, instead of sucking from uh, at the bottom of the tank, which is where all the sediment will, will accumulate over time. So that's great that there's a floating intake. However, there needs to be a way to pull that floating intake out with this old style that has a replaceable filter element. And you can see down in there that there's a yellow, there's a yellow rope but there's no way to grab that rope to pull it out. You can also see in there that there's a, there's a live snake that is squirming around. So clearly there's access for rodents and we want to make sure that we're, everything's sealed and there's no entry for mice or, or snakes to get into the system. The next thing that we're going to look for is what's called a calming inlet. And that is right over here on this side of the tank. There's a, there's a pipe going down to the floor of the cistern. It's a four inch pipe. It's going all the way to the floor. So that's receiving water from the downspouts and bringing it in below the water level, which is exactly what we want to see. Uh, the alternative is having the water just spill into the top of the cistern. And if that happens, during a rain event, all that water will stir up from water pouring into the top. And, and any sediment that's, that's settled to the bottom is now gonna get kicked up and it's gonna make that water murky. So that calming inlet is a good sign that, that the cistern was properly installed at one point. There should be though, this, this particular pipe is going all the way to the floor of the tank and there needs to be some sort of um, either concrete blocks surrounding that pipe or that pipe needs to bend back up 180 degrees so that when the water comes into the into the bottom of that pipe that that 180 degree bend is is creating what's called a force breaker so the water's not just stirring up the bottom but it's it's coming in slowly it's also called a calming inlet coming in slowly and maintaining those sediment zones so in this case we would want to notify the homeowner that they'd want concrete blocks surrounding that that uh, calming inlet pipe. Then the next thing we're going to look for is over here by the, by the down. So because we know this is a rain-fed cistern, we know that these downspouts are feeding the cistern. We want to do a visual inspection to make sure that this connection is above grade. We don't want this, this downspout to meet this four inch pipe at grade level or below grade level. We want this to be, again, about eight inches above grade. It's also not a bad idea, especially since we see a snake in there, to maybe put a bead of caulk around this joint where the downspout meets the downspout adapter. Okay, now we're inside the cistern and I apologize for the echo. Um, it's hard to talk in these, it's not a good echo. 
I wanted to show you exactly what I meant. So here's the calming inlet. That pipe is coming in, going down to the floor, which is what it's supposed to do. But again, there's no concrete blocks surrounding it. So this really does no good without either 180 degree turn there or concrete blocks lining it. This is the intake filter, the floating intake. This is the float, this is the filter itself. And again, you can see that yellow string that is down in the cistern. That needs to go up to the top to extend outside of the tank so that they can pull that filter out and switch it out. Uh, usually, this is an older style filter. This gets switched out every year. Um, we also have newer style that you never have to switch out and you also don't have to pull up to the, to the surface. They're coarse enough that you don't have to clean them. You'll notice, so after we pump down the tank, we get water coming in right here. So there's a leak right here that's allowing groundwater to get in. And it's coming from where this water line was sealed. So that needs to be sealed back up right there. Um, because again, it's allowing groundwater and contamination into the tank. The, the other thing you'll notice is that there is a substantial amount of silt in this tank. So clearly those pre-filter boxes are not doing their job and they need improvement. But that is at least four inches thick and a very good sized pile of uh, silt that needs to be taken out of here and also remedied so that it doesn't build up like that again. And then that snake is in here still <laughs> over in the corner. So we're going to clean this out and get that patched up there, get that rope extended on the floating intake and get some blocks around this so that that calming inlet actually does its job. Just got done cleaning the cistern. We uh, spent a couple hours shoveling and hauling buckets up and went back in and finally got it to where the floor is back in the tank. Wanted to make a note that every time you're in a space like this, you need to have some sort of ventilation system. This is a, this is a ventilation fan that pumps fresh air into it. The old air circulates out. It will exchange fresh air in this tank every two minutes. It's a must, as well as a respirator, especially when you're cleaning. Now, we did pressure wash the walls of the tank, but I wanted to note that another inspection point is knowing what kind of tank you have. Concrete tanks, if, if it's one of our concrete tanks, you don't have to seal it, but this one actually had um, this one actually had what's called Thorough Seal or Master Seal 581 to, uh, to waterproof it. So when you're, when you're doing pressure washing, you want to make sure you're not washing off the sealant and um, you're doing it on a low setting just to rinse the tank and, make, and give it a chlorine rinse, um, which is what we did here. Now this tank could stand to be sealed again you can see how much is flaked off over time. Um, the other thing is you want to check the joint. This is a precast tank, which uses a con seal, uh, which is a potable grade sealant. It's a corn-based sealant. So you want to check the joint. Um, I patched right here with some hydraulic cement where the con seal had worn in, just to make sure it's watertight. And then I used hydraulic cement to patch that leak where the water was coming into the tank. And that's, hydraulic cement is the only thing that will stop an active leak. It's very hard to stop an active leak, but hydraulic, hydraulic cement will do that. Well, you're in the tank too. It's a good time 
um, to check the check valve of the tank. So this is a, they use a, a jet pump inside the house and a jet pump needs a check valve at the, at the bottom of the suction line. So this is the floating intake filter, check valve, water line feeding into, into the house. So you want to just do a visual inspection of this check valve to make sure all that looks tight and there's no leaks. If this check valve leaks downstream of the intake filter, if it leaks anywhere from here to the pump, that pump will not be able to prime and you'll get it cycling continuously. So you just want to make sure that nothing was disrupted and that that's still watertight. So I wanted to save this point of our inspection till the very end. After you could see what was inside the cistern, what needed to be cleaned, what accumulated at the bottom. So we've we've gone through the entire checklist of the outside components. We um, we ended here with the downspout, making sure that that this pipe is elevated eight, at least eight inches. You may want to silicone that. But then I wanted to cover the pre-filtration. This is an attempt at pre-filtration. This was a, a precast quote unquote sand filter. These in my experience are, are not to be used for cisterns. It would be better not to have any filtration than to have this. Because what happens is this, any media that's in here, um, usually they put sand on the bottom and stone on the top or some activated carbon or charcoal in there. It's a good idea in theory, but if you have too fine of, of media in there, the, the intensity of the rain, the flow coming in won't be able to, this filter won't be able to keep up. So that it, what will happen is it will overflow. Then um, if you have too coarse of media in there, what good is it doing? It's not really filtering anything. It's just running over the stone before it goes into the water. Um, but what will happen is with these filter boxes, critters will get in here. The sand that's used to bed it will make its way into the cistern. And that's all that sediment that we saw in the cistern is just accumulation of whatever media was in here. So uh, we recommend if, if the budget is a concern, then just putting an aluminum downspout debris filter, one of our $32 downspout debris filters in there on each downspout, it's a great idea. And if you really want to get a good thorough system, then our modulin pre-filters that mount to the base of each downspout, that will get you absolutely refined water when it goes into the cistern. You'll never have to clean out your cistern. And that's definitely the way to go. But again, you want to try to avoid this type of pre-filter at all costs. And then lastly, of course, we'd want to inspect what's happening inside the home, making sure that there's some sort of sterilization or disinfection system inside the home, um, either an, a chlorine injection pump with a retention tank, which is what this home has, or a UV sterilizer, which is what we recommend, with some sediment pre-filters, uh, cartridge pre-filters. So uh, you definitely want to make sure that there's e there's some way of controlling bacteria. So if bacteria does grow in the tank, there's something inside the house that is managing that bacteria before it gets into your drinking water supply. Thank you very much for watching. And again, this is Jonathan from Rain Brothers, rainbrothers.com, where we have all the cistern components that you could possibly need.